Okay, so uh, as mentioned before, uh, when you're preparing for the exam, you should uh, have a plan how to prepare for it. And I have mentioned this before also, that uh, bigger joints normally are easier to prepare. So for, uh, like examination of hip is normally one way or one sequence. And uh, you can just remember those uh, sequence and it's, uh, it's easy to deal with most of the pathology. Uh, similarly, a knee, you can divide into two or three broad categories of a young uh, ligamentous problem of knee and osteoarthritis knee. Similarly, in shoulder, uh, two, three categories of unstable shoulder impingement and uh, stiff shoulder. But unfortunately, when you come to hand and feet, <clears throat> there are many, many uh, joints, many bones, and it is very difficult to uh, just do one way of examination of the whole, whole range of problem you can get. So a, a, a hallux valgus examination will be completely different than an uh, ankle arthritis. <clears throat> so you have to have some planning. It is not like MBBS where we expect you to one way of examining uh, and, and you will pass it. Our aim here is to uh, present with you with your problem and then go in a sequence way, uh, which is logical to reach a diagnosis with the history and examination and then uh, uh, plan few uh, investigation to confirm diagnosis or rule out other thing and then to treat the patient. So this sequence is part of your examination when you're dealing with MS or FRCS orthopedics. So foot and ankle that way become a bit difficult. So we will try to make it a bit more easier for you so that you can tackle this problem uh, uh, in a more uh, scientific and organized way rather than randomly uh, coming to exam or your clinic and then uh, not knowing uh, what to do with a particular patient. So Shaurabh, uh, you see this patient, can you comment about the uh, left foot of this patient? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I can. I can see the uh, swelling around the ankle. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then is the redness uh, around the insertion of uh, tendon Achilles mm -hmm. at, at that side. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I, I can see uh, some uh, virus deformity of the heel. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, that's much up. I know uh, if uh, I, I can see, I can see, I, I should see the two fingers laterally, ideally, but uh, in here I can see only one. Okay. So only yeah, only you middle give, finger is. You, you, you're given good. So uh, if I give you a history that this is a 30 year old male who 18 months ago uh, was doing some repair work on his roof and fell down. So what is immediately come to your mind as a possible differential diagnosis? Uh, possible uh, differential might be some fracture of the metatarsals of the, or, or the uh, fracture around the, any ankle bone. Yeah, ankle bone. So but we we not yet seen from the front, but uh, yeah, it, 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 if this has a fall, it's a traumatic event leading to what you described is the heel look like it's gone into a bit of virus and there's a little of puckering of the skin at the back there. Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah, Mukil, you want to say what kind of diagnosis is coming in your mind? Are you there, Mukil? Oh, yes, sir. So what is coming in your mind? Um, Somebody had a fall from a height and presented with this finding from the back. We don't know yet the uh, uh, yet the uh, from front and side, but what is coming in your mind? The malunited calcaneum fracture. Yeah, it could be malunited calcaneum fracture because that's a, 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 a quite a classical history. So you. You would like to know a bit more <clears throat> history uh, from this before you can concentrate on which bit you have to examine uh, properly. So that's a problem with the foot and ankle is that if you don't have a little bit history and a little bit idea about differential diagnosis, you can keep changing 
here and there and not reach a diagnosis, which can be frustrating for you in the clinic uh, if you're taking too long or frustrating in the exam uh, if you're not reaching a diagnosis. And that's what we will try to <clears throat> make it a bit more smoother for you how to reach it. So as I told you, foot has got more than 20 bone and more than 30 joints. So very difficult uh, if you do every examination same way. What you need to do is quickly come to a, a group of diagnosis or one or two, three differential diagnosis so that you can concentrate on that. So if you can, uh, even if you can plan where, where is the main problem, forefoot, midfoot or hindfoot, and you need to know what is forefoot, what is midfoot and what is hindfoot. So uh, uh, just here, I want to uh, clarify with uh, students here, uh, although forefoot is your metatarsal and phalanges, and the hind foot is your calcaneum and talus, and somewhere in between all the bones are considered into midfoot. Uh, <clears throat> when we talk about arthritis, with slightly different uh, name given to that, and sometimes you can be a little bit confused, what are we talking about? So uh, when we talk about hind foot arthritis, we normally talk about subtalar and, uh, 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 and talocalcaneal and calcaneocuboid. So remember that triple joints we talk fusing triple arthrodesis. Those all three joints come at a hind foot. Okay, when we talk about hind foot arthritis, it is uh, those three joints. When we talk ankle arthritis, that is a separate entity in itself, ankle arthritis. But when you, when somebody is saying mainly uh, hind foot arthritis, then that's what we're talking. Some might some people might include ankle in it, but generally speaking, hind foot arthritis, those triple joints. When you talk about midfoot arthritis, you normally, most of the time, it, that because the commonly involved joint is a Lisfranc frank joint. So that's where you're talking about Lisfranc frank uh, midfoot arthritis. Although when you talk about mid-tarsal joint or tars, uh, trans-tarsal joint or chopard joint, you're talking about this joint here, calcaneocuboid and uh, telonavicular joint. So remember this joint is named, has got this S-shaped joint, has got two, three names with it, a transverse tarsal, mid-tarsal, or, or your chopard joint. And this joint is a lisfranc frank joint. In between, these joints are hardly significant. They don't have much movement there. So you have movement at ankle, subtalar. You had those telonavicular and calcaneocuboid. The together, this joint is called a transport tarsal or mid-tarsal joint. And then you have problem around the lisfranc frank joint. Obviously, you can have MTP and IPJ problem uh, distally there. So remember the joints and the foot, uh, because they can be a bit confusing when, we, when we're talking about which bit we're talking about. So that's, that's, that's the thing. How do I, I deal with my foot and ankle when it comes to clinic? And it should be exactly the same to you, because that's what the examination is, that we're preparing for you to uh, deal with the clinical problem in the clinic so that you have a system of going through and not missing many things. So what I do is, this is my uh, plan of, uh, uh, management or uh, examination of foot and ankle case. I take a short history to uh, know which bit I'm going to examine. I then uh, quickly, while there, looking at patient shoes or any orthotics, if he's wearing and if there is any different wear pattern or anything happening there. And then I go all around the patient in a standing, so front side and back. Uh, looking for both medial and lateral uh, border of the foot and then looking at the back. And quickly, while patient is there, ask them to do the first the double heel raise and then single heel raise. And that examination I will do in every case of foot and ankle. When you do this much examining, this, this should take you one minute. So out of your whole five minutes given you for a short case, one minute is enough for uh, take few relevant history questions and then go all around patients and do this test in every foot and ankle case. I mean, see from front, see from the side, see the gait of the patient and, uh, and then do the heel rise. And then when by this time, you should have a fairly good idea which problem I'm dealing with. Is it a forefoot problem? Is it a midfoot problem or a hind foot problem? And also, is there any any classical pattern uh, of deformity which I need to uh, deal with. So we'll come to know what are the cases in foot and ankle you can get in the exam. But uh, you, if you can divide into reason-wise, 
so that will be a good idea or or you can come to a a, a classical pattern that this kind of foot i'm examining quite often it is quite possible that patient will have deformities in forefoot midfoot and hind foot all three and we'll also have a plan for that as we uh, progress but uh, a, a first thing is to go around patient and see where bit which bit is the i'm looking for and then we will come to examine the patient in sitting position where we will again go through uh the front side and back but more important the plantar side and then the field move special test and neurovascular status and examine the back and uh, any uh, anything else you missing so if you have that pattern in your mind uh, it doesn't matter which way you go you may be examining the back while they are standing uh, but you need to know that uh, in a foot and ankle case it should be exposed up to the knee joint and at some stage you have to comment about the back so uh, it will it probably may be a good idea uh, at some stage either in standing or later on remember about it so any foot and ankle case i'll 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 greet the patient ask two or three important question what are the presenting complaints then while there uh, i will stand and go around the patient or ask the patient to keep turning and look uh, from all side ask him to walk and do heel raise and by this time i will have a fairly good idea that which bit i'm looking for or what problem i'm looking for and then i will concentrate on that problem because there's no point if you got a helix valgus case and you, and uh, and you examining let's say an ankle uh, tuberculous infection that you will do the same examination the examination will be slightly different in two cases so you need to have a good idea which bit i need to examine so what are, when i'm looking this is